when you talk about f female rappers, why does it always seem, you know, from your point of view, that female rappers are always at odds with each other? You know, like for example, now, you know, Nicki Minaj and Lil' Kim have never done a song together, said anything nice about each other, sh you know, shaking hands, anything. You know, before then you had other female rappers that would constantly fight with each other when there's never enough female rappers anyways. I think that's something wrong in the industry of people thinking that you must attack each other to be in hip hop where they don't think wisely, just like Muhammad Ali and Joe Fazer, where everybody thought they was enemies, was the best defense and knew how to take that to the bank. And many of ours that get silly with this, you want to argue over, you know, you don't like this one because they're from the west side, this one's from the east side, or this one got a better hair and this one don't have a better hair, or this one is light skin, or this one is dark skin, or this one is, is, is from the, the white community and this one is from the, the black community. You know, arguing over foolishness, just do the music and put it out there. There's room for everybody. It's, uh, it's up to the, the people that's pushing your music because you might not even get pushed if your company don't get behind you. If your publishing company and, and, and all that don't get behind you to put some of your songs in movies and videos. There's a whole machine behind a lot of this that makes you become a star. It makes you become a, a somebody high in the music industry. Most people think that you just come out and you make a record and just put out, oh yes, you know, I'm gonna make it. It don't work like that. Many people think that when the Beatles came out that everybody was screaming, the girls was chasing them and all that. A lot of that was made um, to be put like a mind control and put out there and put money behind it and had them chasing them, which made the records become, even though they was great songs, but it took a, a machine to make them happen. Oh, so all that was fake? Oh, a lot of that uh, came in a, a different way of making that happen. You'd be surprised how, how, how they make a lot of these songs hits on the radio. I've been among a lot of executive people and seen what they did, even with some of my songs uh, behind the, the scene. Uh, originally, uh, hip hop was was an anti violence type of thing, and you know I, I remember, you know, seeing interviews with, you know, KRS One and, and MC Shan, and you know when they were going at each other on records, when they were you know, battling, you know, with hip hop records, they would actually go on tour together and capitalize off that, and it never turned violent, you know, because everyone knew, you know to actually capitalize off the situation, like you were saying with Muhammad Ali and, and Joe Frazier. Um, but now with the internet and social media, hip hop has become a lot more violent again, because now everyone wants to have video footage of it and put it up. Well, I think, you know, that's really a shame among our culture of hip hoppers and people that put up certain things of uh, violent on a YouTube and talking about Let's keep it real. That's not keeping it real. That's being crazy as hell. You're not loving yourself as a people. You're not loving the culture as a movement. And you're not caring about the young ones who see this that might copy and follow in those footsteps. That's just like um, people where they used to say these um, gangster rappers are the ones that's the, the problem of doing all this. When it's not just the gangster rapper, it, it comes from many of the old movies that you've seen from the Al Capones and all those type of things that uh, America or many other countries keep making these type of movies and keep putting it out there uh, and making you think this is what it is where it's all being played as a mind control thing. So that's why I still say it comes back to those program directors. If you're going to play a record that's talking or calling a woman a B or using the N word or talking about kill, 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 that you need to make a record that's telling you about fight to power, their mama, and all that type of things. This way there's a balance, the balance of my art in hip hop or in any music out there. I mean, how do you feel about the N-word being used in hip hop? I'm not crazy about it. Too many people die for that word. I know people use it as a cuss word of they think of, of an endearment, but there ain't nothing nowhere greatness about that word using the n-word whatsoever even among your, ourselves as a people or in general for all people to be calling each other now the n-word has been accepted by everybody around the world calling each other all types of n's or b's and thinking that you know this is how you got to be in hip-hop or you got to follow 
uh, 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 you know, the, the, before you could be tough or something, you can't be talking about God, but I can talk about Lucifer and Satan all day long. You know, people crazy as hell. I mean, how, how do you feel when, because of hip hop, you know, when you go to other countries, you see kids of other nationalities using the N-word amongst each other, primarily because of hip hop. I, I feel it's because of hip hop. Yeah, I feel that, they, you know, a lot of them are crazy as hell. And, and do they really understand what is you using? Why is you using that? Why is you picking up on certain words uh, 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 that coming out of the United States of America Republic? Why is you using certain things in your songs or think every song you make, you get to cuss? If you're going to make certain songs and you cuss and make another part when you're using that studio time for you don't waste money, where you, you know, using the certain songs that you don't have to go back to clean them up for those radio stations that want it clean. So a lot of people, they go and do these recording and they forget about making a clean version. Then they come back, oh, you know, I can't play this record because you know, got this or got that. And, uh, and then, then you're mad as hell. Well, you should have did that from the get-go when you went into the studio. Make both versions. Use the studio wisely. Now, you know, when you talk about, you know, violence in, in hip-hop, now you actually came from a violent background because you were in the Black Spades. Uh, how old were you when you joined the Black Spades? I was very at a young age when I joined the Black Spades. You know, we had different groups. We, in my area, we had the 10th Division Young Spades. I joined on the elder area of the uh, uh, South Browns, on the other side of Browns there, the 1st Division, 1st Chapter, under the leadership of Cool D, who became the Honorable Cool DJ D, who we got a lot of our, 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 our part in hip-hop of dancing, disco, and rocking with the music system that Cool DJ D brought about on our side, being the first in the black space, bringing the, the music outside. And then my other brother, the great disco king Mario, and my, my other brother, Tex DJ Hollywood, and other brother, Kenny Ken, all of us coming out of the black space that was bringing all this different sound of our side in, 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 in this culture. And then you had the father himself from the west side that was bringing the culture. And we had the violence of the black spade, the savage no men, seven in the mortals and all that. But you also had consciousness and greatness that the black space was doing by cleaning up the area uh, of drugs and also cleaning up uh, a lot of the different racial uh, tension that might have been happening with so-called black people and so-called white people at the time when a lot of racism was going on in the different areas of the Browns. How big were the black spades when you were part of that? Like how many members? Well, black spades was definitely big throughout the city of New York. Uh, by every um, police precinct, there was a, a, a division of the black spades. So uh, hundreds of members? Hundreds. Even thousands. Were you a warlord of the Black Spades? I was a warlord in my first division, first chapter, under cool, the leadership of Cool DJ D. What does it mean to be a warlord? What it means to be a warlord is one who could bring peace or one who could start war. One who could go to the other group and, and decide uh, whether you're going to... a lot Like when you see a lot of the old movies when they fight in between um, the Romans and the other groups and stuff, they had a certain people that would come out and they speak, they they terms and stuff of what, what it's going to be and you, what you're going to use and what you're going to use if you're going to fight or if you want to bring about peace. So that's what a warlord could do. I mean, what was like the worst situation that you got into during that time? Well, I, we, we had to have that when my book come out. I'm in the, in, the, in the making of trying to make a book. I've been trying to make one since the year of 1996, but when I give up so much deep other knowledge, a lot of these so-called writers, they start running away because they can't deal with this heavier knowledge that we give them. You know, I would assume, you know, from what I know about the Black Spades and your involvement in it, that there was, you know, a high degree of violence going on during that time. You know, what really made you think and say that this is really not the way that I want to live my life and I actually want to go and promote peacefulness instead? Well, you got to say when you see a lot of your own members getting hurt or killed, or some of your sisters who got hurt or killed, uh, or people just getting hurt and killed over foolishness because you stepped on somebody's foot, or you looked at somebody's woman the wrong way, or uh, um, you know you didn't like a certain color or a certain clothes that somebody had on, or just some, somebody doing something silly or, or slapping something out of your hand or, or your face or, or punching you, or just a lot of craziness that just went on back then. 
But then there's a lot of good that showed that when they, when, they, when they stand for certain things that was dealing with justice, it was on the money. So the black spades were like the police force in a way, you know, would protect their communities when the, you know, because the police presence wasn't there. Well, you could have police present and you still had the black spades. So you had certain presence that the black spades definitely protect in certain, in they, certain uh, um, territories and zones, as well as you had your police that would certain do protect or you got certain ones that would bring body harm. You know, I'm looking, I'm looking online right now uh, on the black spades Wikipedia page. And it shows one of the jackets, and it has like a Nazi sign. It says Black Spades Gestapo, and there's a, a Nazi sign where the, the E is supposed to be. Uh-huh. Is that was something that was around when you were doing it? Yeah, they had many who might have took a Nazi sign. and you know, Anything that made you look more wild, crazy, savage, or renegade, you would take different emblems, even if you didn't know what the emblem meant or not. And just like most people think the Nazi sign is a Nazi sign, the Nazi sign is really an African sign that they just inverted the wrong way. Many signs of that same sign is used all over Asia, which got it from Africa. And it's just that the, the Nazis took it and, and did it a different way for they could use it in their own different um, devious way uh, uh, of their science uh, of making it happen. So most people think it's all a Nazi sign, but don't do the research on that sign or symbol. I mean, but in the case of, of the Gestapo, I mean, you're actually using the word Gestapo and using the Nazi sign, so it's implying the whole Nazi thing. So it's designed to, to Well, shock. they look at the Nazi as gangsters. Just like the way they, uh, many of the people wear gang jackets that look like the Hells Angels. So anything that looked like is a renegade or what's supposed to be the popular version of what's happening, people will um, um, run to because you think you're doing something that's making you think that you're a gangster or that you tough and rough or, or, or anti or what's supposed to be happy and good. So it's something that gave people fear. The more wilder you look, the more people fear you. So is the Black Spades still around? Black Spades is still here as a fraternity organization now that we still give um, events. We still have the, the Black Spades reunion in the summertime. And there's a lot uh, happening that deal with the Black Spades uh, fraternity group with the Universal Zulu Nation. Still giving honors to all the pioneers and elders of the Black Spade community that, that was, was still out there, that we still give events, that still come around to many of the events that we have still to this day. Where we are as men, we just understand the equity in our in our relationship. You know what I'm saying? And you know, I just I, the the good outweigh the bad. Okay, we can't hate on her. So let's say she has AIDS. Okay, now let's call her a fat bitch. Like, well, you already said I had AIDS, and so <laughs> you think you it? calling me a fat bitch is gonna really hurt me? 